Hey everyone, welcome back to the session. This is the second video in this series, and now, we are going to set up the source codes in our local system. As a first step, we can download the entire source code from the Git repository. Git repository URL is mentioned below in the description. Go to the Git repo and download it as a zip file. Do not clone this repo to your local system because we are going to push this source code in Azure repo. Let's understand what is inside the source code. Open the source code in VS Code Editor. First we can go through the ARM template folder. Our aim is to create two resources in Azure. First one is an Azure Container Instance, and the second one is Azure Container Registry. Let's see the Container Registry.azrm.json file. Later in the session Azure Release Pipeline will create the Container Registry using this script. Let's dig into this file. Registry name, we can give with our choice. Also I am appending my Container Registry name with the deployment ID. Using this deployment ID along with the name, we'll give a distinct resource name for each resource group Azure. Resource group name and location will be given as pipeline variables. This will be discussed later on in this series. Here I used the standard SKU. This output parameter part is very important. Here we are defining how to get the newly created Azure container registry name, server name, username and password. This output data can be read in the next release pipeline job and can set it as a pipeline variable. Next file is container instance.azmr.json. This file is the ARM template for Azure Container Instance. Here we require few parameters which can be different for different releases. For example, we deploy on build to dev, and the same can be deployed to production with different configuration values. These configuration values can be passed as parameters to the ARM template while we are in the release pipeline. While doing deployment to different environments, we cannot change the code specific to each environment. If we use the changing values as parameters we can deploy our same build to multiple environments with different parameter values. Here, we are creating the container instance with following parameters. First one is, number of CPUs. So, when you are deploying it to a dev environment we may be using a single core. But the same application is deploying to production maybe with four cores. Next is memory and GBs of the container instance which we will be creating in our release pipeline. Registry server name, registry username, registry password are reading from the container registry ARM template output variable and not by us. And the last file in the ARM template folder is the param.containerinstances.json file. This file defines the input parameters we are passing to the container instance ARM template. Here, we need to mention which are the parameters and optionally we can give its default values. If we are not providing the default values, this should be provided in the release pipeline. Image value is coming from container registry. We will see how all these files are integrating while dealing with release pipeline. Next is our Docker file, which will create the Docker image for our node application. Later on, this image is pushed to the container registry and then will be deployed to the container instance. Docker file will be explained in the next session in detail. But in high level, we are creating a node server image and deploying our node with Express application. Index.js file is a node file, which exposes two endpoints using Express. First one is a get and will return a hello world text. And the second one is slash customers. Next file is package.json. We can exclude MongoDB, Monk, Nodaman, and Socket.io modules as they are not using in our project. Main node module we are using here is Express for node. Express is a minimal and flexible Node.js web application framework that provides a robust set of features to develop web and mobile applications. That's it for this session. In the next session, we will continue creating the Docker image in our local system. See you there.